Number four then, from paper one of the 2021 Higher Maths resource paper, as it was, three marks here, lines. Determine whether the line passing through these two points is perpendicular to the line with this equation. Well, that's just gradients. If the gradient of this line multiplied by the gradient of this line comes to negative one, if the product is negative one, then the lines must be perpendicular. It's a fairly simple arrangement, that. That just comes from the fact that if you've got a line with a certain gradient, let's just say you go A steps along and B steps up. So its gradient will be B upon A, the rate at which you climb up for each unit along. Turn that through a right angle. Well, it's difficult to turn the sloping line through a right angle, but it's easy to turn these horizontal and vertical parts because that horizontal part will become vertical and that vertical part will become horizontal. So it'll go like this. So there's the perpendicular line. And now what's its gradient? Maybe that's the direction along. Well, that's a really good arrow. So for B steps along, you actually fall A. So it's negative A upon B. That's the pattern you know, isn't it? You turn it upside down, you make it negative. The negative of the reciprocal. In particular, if you were to multiply them, it would come to negative 1. M1, M2 comes to negative 1. So that's what you have to show. The gradient of this times the gradient of that comes to negative 1. There you go. So, oh, I'll just give them names. I think I'll call that line 1 and that line 2. Right, so then I can use those as suffixes to distinguish between the two gradients. So the gradient of line 1... Well, that'll just be the difference in the y-coordinates, whether you write it down as delta y over delta x or y2 minus y1, over the difference in the x-coordinates, x2 minus x1, meaning how far along and how far up. So that'll be, and of course we're taking it in this order here going forward, so not that it matters as long as you keep it consistent. So negative 7, take away negative, so take away 2. Over 2, take away negative 4. You could do it the other way around. 2 take away negative 7, negative 4 take away 2, as long as you keep it consistent. So that becomes negative 9 upon 6. I better take that all the way down, because they like to have things cancelled. So that's negative 3 upon 2. So you know what you're looking for here. Here you're looking for 2 upon 3. And fairly quickly, you get the gradient of line 2 will be, once you've rearranged that, I shouldn't have just have shortened that, I'll just rearrange that quickly just now, take that 3 across and divide, and you've got 2 thirds of x plus 3, so its gradient, oh, was a wee bit presumptuous there, its gradient will be the coefficient of x, 2 thirds. Now, that's a mark each, that's a mark, and that's a mark. knowing to get their gradients, but now you need to demonstrate it. You can't just say, oh, look at that, look. It's upside down and that's negative and that's not. You demonstrate it by showing that the product comes to negative 1 rather than through any linguistic skills. M1, L2, ML2. That's negative 3 upon 2 times 2 upon 3. Well, that comes to negative 1. So now you can say... Since the product of the gradients is negative 1, that means that line 1, I've given it a name, is perpendicular, I'll just write that out in full, perpendicular to line 2. That's the third mark.